Hey, ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están todos? Regresamos esta semana en Hora Prima con otro invitado especial, David Byrne. Este cantante, primero conocido por ser líder de la gran banda de los 80s de Talking Heads y luego por su estilo particular e innovador como solista en discos como Ray Momo, Uhu y ahora el más reciente Feelings. Pronto regresa a Latinoamérica en una gira y les cuento que David Byrne, bueno, por supuesto, David Byrne está fascinado con Latinoamérica y creo que todos los latinoamericanos también están fascinados con David Byrne gracias a su interés en explorar ¿no? los sonidos de percusión y ritmos incluso también a través de su sello Luaca Pop que distribuye la música de muchos grupos como King Changó, como Susana Vaca de Perú ahora los venezolanos de Los Amigos Invisibles y muchísimos más y el sello de Luaca Pop ya lleva, como, lleva más o menos como 10 años de existencia y recién ahora empezó a funcionar su website ya todos ustedes adictos al internet pueden conocer mejor este sello y a todos sus músicos a través de sus computadoras si se preguntan qué significa lo acá pop, tendrán que definirlo por sí solos, ya que como todo, lo que todo como todo lo que David Byrne hace, te lo deja libre a tu imaginación y a tu interpretación. Y según la filosofía del sello, eh, lo acá pop es como la música que te hace bailar y vibrar con mucha vida. Pero buscamos también por ahí qué significaba, qué significaba lo acá pop y, en, y terminamos encontrando que era un tema del jazzista clásico Charlie Parker que él nunca, que David Byrne nunca logró grabar. Hace poco estuvimos ahí, eh, fuimos a la oficina en New York, a la oficina de David Byrne, de su sello, un lugar bien, bien interesante, como esperábamos de un personaje como él, para conversar de este último disco, sobre sus intereses en otros géneros, eh, grupos, y también hablamos de su nueva visita a Latinoamérica. Así que veamos qué pasa ahora en 1998 con David Byrne. Let's talk about the tour, no? You're getting ready to go to Puerto Rico, you're going to Mexico City, Guadalajara, Peru, you're going to Chile, Buenos Aires, Brazil, mm -hmm. I think. Yes. You've been there in all those cities before. I have never played in Lima before. Ah, uh, you're going to Lima. I've been to Lima before, twice, okay. but never performed there before. So what can your fans now, you know, you know that you have a lot of people waiting for you there. And you know, I know, you know, I know that a lot of people know me Yeah. But I also know that I don't sell so many records because uh, I don't have hit singles. But yeah. people know know me. They know I, I, I like a lot of the, the bands, whatever you want to call Latin rock bands, uh, Brazilian artists, Latin artists, salsa. You know, they know that I love. They know, they are, yeah, uh, definitely. So But well, at the same time, Latin America, they don't buy so many records, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> know you. And, right. and okay, so what what can your fans expect from from to see in these uh, shows that you're going to do? I know you have like yeah, it's a dance party. <laughs> and it pretty much doesn't stop. I I take I do maybe one one ballad where I, I can breathe, yeah. so I can breathe and stop dancing. And the rest is all a dance party, and, and you have different costumes. I change costumes? costumes all the time, so it's like five or six different people. Each costume has a, a kind of personality. I read that, that you had a um, a singer, a girl, that in some songs she, she sings through a theremin. Yes, is she sing. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how she, if she can bring this equipment. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, she does one of uh, something on her own where she does things, electronics and theremin, and she's really great, she's a great singer. So tell me a little bit, uh, so she's going to be there, and the oh equipment, yeah, yeah. you're trying to... <laughs> yeah, we're trying to arrange it. <laughs> and uh, so tell me, do you have an opening act? Yeah, it changes from country to country. Yeah, local yeah. opening acts. Uh, do you know who are going to be? You know, I know in some places. I know in Peru, it's Peru Negro, and someone else. In Brazil, it's... Who decide who's going to be opening? They're suggesting yeah. it to me. Ah, okay. Uh, in Brazil, do you know who it is? It's, uh, their record is called Dupi or something like this. It's, oh, I should, well, we'll find out, Yale knows. Yeah, yeah. I, I got the record, it's a great record. The band is great. Um, a like little similar to uh, Chico Science, a, a oh. group that I love. In Mexico, it's Los de Abajo. I don't know. Um, in Buenos Aires, I don't know. But I'm sure, 
Should it be someone good? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> in in this latest album, um, you can still uh, hear a lot of uh, Latin influences. What is it about this music that uh, that keeps you, you know, like sti still attract you so much? I have a different uh, reason or excuse uh, every year. This year, when people ask me, I, I tell them it's because I come from a cold uh, northern country where people are very reserved, notoriously reserved. I come from. I was born in Scotland, so getting in touch with this music and this culture and this food and everything is for me. It's a it's a way of compensating for my yeah. Scottish roots. So um, one of the songs, you know, that have the flavor and, and the album is Miss America, not the first single too. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the what is the story behind Miss America? What is the lyrics all about? It's my view of America. I often write songs about well, North America. Uh, it's a view of America from outside of uh, America as a woman, a woman that you that you love, that you lust after, but she mistreats you. Uh, she'll never be faithful, um, but you keep going after her and desiring her, desiring her anyway.
work, um, basically this album is like a, more like a studio album. You work with producers, with a lot of musicians, the orchestra. And so how do you, how do you recreate the sound in, uh, in a live show, in this tour now? Uh, I got some great musicians. Um, a pedal steel player, you know, who plays this country yeah, yeah. western instrument, but he can also play keyboards and guitar. Uh, a guy who plays drums, but also can do samples and loops and, c and computer stuff. Uh, so how many pieces are these? Only five. There's only five of us, but we can make a lot of a lot of sounds. <laughs> That's great. So, um, when did you said decided to work with Morchiva? You know, this and the latest album. I heard their record uh, just before it came out, and I thought it was good. And I didn't know what I was going to do with my record, but I thought some of the stuff that I was doing was a little bit close to what they were doing. So I thought, hey, you maybe were, I should... You were working maybe with fun, them. Maybe it'd be fun to work together. You were working with the brothers? So this one yeah, Paul yeah it's two brothers. Ross. Mm -hmm. Ross and Paul Godfrey. Yeah. And now, um, do you have plans to work with Gus Gus? I yeah, it's somewhere. possible. This is possible. So that's I a met great with team, them a couple no? times. And then, the, you know, the third time I met with them, I met with them in Mexico City. Oh. Was, oh, yeah, yeah, they've yeah, been yeah, there, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah. yeah, they were there. That's great. They, they, that's a, a, an interesting group, no? They're like a kind of group of artists. I think that yeah. it's only. It's kind of a collective, yeah. yeah. Uh, some are musicians, some are filmmakers, some are actors. And you just met them and you liked them, so you decided to work with them. Yeah, I liked their record, so I just thought, and I saw their show. So you don't call, just called them up and said, hey, <laughs> let's, maybe someday let's do something. So you take decisions like this. You don't think that much on your own. Well, I'm not saying that you don't think that much, but <laughs> no, maybe I'm not explaining myself. No, no, I understand. Sorry. No, but you don't. I don't worry about it. Oh, okay. I'm, <laughs> That's what I'm maybe saying. Maybe in the past I would have worried about it, but now. Why in the past? Then? Maybe in the past I was worried that uh, if I did these kind of things, I would lose my identity. But now I feel like, okay, I know who I am. I know. I'm not confused any <laughs> about this anymore. <laughs> I'm a doll, right? And so, <laughs> so I'm now. I'm. I'm not afraid because I feel like I, I won't lose my identity. <laughs> that nobody's going to steal it if I my identity if I work with these yeah, people. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Don, who, who had the idea of the Don? Oh yeah, I, had, I wanted, I thought it'd be funny to make a doll for a cover. How many Dons? There is like four Dons? Are they, are they here? Are they here? One no. with different heads. <laughs> yeah. I think it's There's fantastic. There's four. Four. You know when I Careful, saw Careful, the, the heads come off. <laughs> <laughs> Same guy, right? <laughs> Maybe you know, maybe a few less wrinkles, and uh, maybe a little bit stronger here. But <laughs> uh, that's good. The, fir the first the first uh, time I saw the cover of the album, I said, "Oh, I don't know. It sounds like it was going to be like kind of an electronic uh, album. I don't know why. I thought mm -hmm. that, and then I uh, I don't know. But it I has think some elements like, like this. Yeah, there is some. But uh, no, it's not a. But no way. Oh, it's not all electronic. It's just some elements. Oh, what I thought. Um, uh, what do you think about this? You know, you work with uh, well, some of these bands. They have DJs too, and, and guys that just start doing music. No? And uh, so, what do you think about this DJ culture now in oh, the nineties? It's, it's like uh, for me, it's the like same me. process as hip hop or punk rock or anything like this. It's people who don't have too much money, who don't have a lot of musical training, but they found a way to express themselves musically with either turntables, samplers, one guitar, two chords and a lot of volume, something like this. But it's enough to, to be able to express yourself, to say something that you have to say. I saw the website. Lotapop has a great website. Oh, thank you very much. I heard artists like Susana Baca uh -huh. and and I, th I thought she was fantastic. Oh, so you I, could hear the stuff on the website. Yeah, that's great. You oh, can good. hear like yeah, two yeah. songs of each. Yeah. I was and with a friend and he said, oh, I want to buy this one. And yeah, it's the yeah. only way that he could buy, you know, the... Yeah, there's a little button you press so you can buy. Yeah. <laughs> there's also, what on the, else on the website? We also made like kind of a radio station. 
And you can choose between Latin or Brazilian or rock or different styles on this, ra it's like different radio stations. Oh, that's good, so you can play, <laughs> you can play them. Yeah. yeah, you just turn it on and, and it starts coming into your computer like a radio. And this, there is like great compilations? Yeah, the quality is not so great yet, but well, in, in, yeah, in the future, it'll be really great. So what did you like about Susana Baca? Uh, what it did was, you met her and how? Uh, I was taking some, I was taking some Spanish classes from a, a singer from uh, Buenos Aires, who lives here in New York, and uh, <laughs> a singer from Buenos Aires. Yeah, uh, it's kind of from uh, an ep uh, past epoch. You know, this guy um, Bernardo Palumbo, and kind of a Nueva Trova uh, singer. And at one point, he played me this song of Susanna. I said, what's that? The words, it's so beautiful. And uh, yeah. the music is this mixture of uh, whatever, Andean and kind of a little bit of kind of African Cuban rhythm. Yeah. Just this mixture that I'd never heard before. And I thought, this is great. It really feels great. <laughs> and it's a beautiful melody. And the words are so sad, but very poetic, beautifully written. So uh, this kind of opened the door, one song. And I yeah. just said, I have to find out if there's more music like this. In the future, in a way, uh, in, for example, this is a case, not me buying and through internet, mm -hmm. but I think that uh, in the future it will, it will have an impact in the distribution system, don't you think? I, th I think it will have a huge <laughs> yeah, impact. The Warners guy is gone, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but that's... This will have know, a no, it will ha exactly. It'll have a huge impact. Uh, the the only problem will be that how do you find the things that are, have something importance and excitement for you? Yeah. Because there's millions of possibilities. Um, but and maybe yeah, it, it seems like little now, but it will become like really huge. Like I was with a friend. I tell you, I was with a friend, and he said, "Hey, let, let me listen to that. There is a, there was a, an a Asian compilation." Oh, yeah. that, it was fantastic. It's I crazy. said, what is this? It's I good. never heard about this. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> no, so that's, it's like, a, it's like, I don't know. It's yeah. very, 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 very interesting to have that. Maybe today, and um, maybe, do you think that in the United States there is a market for all this? But the United States is kind of conservative in terms of what they play on radio. Or, yeah. Um, I'm talking about the United States, like the people that export uh, this is true. to the world. This is true. At the, at the, uh, although in the, uh, in the big cities, you know, like New York, you can hear things. Yeah. And the colleges and universities, they sometimes have their own radio stations. So they'll play sometimes. They'll be a little bit more adventurous what they play. Uh, but yes, as a whole, the United States is very conservative because it's, maybe because it's so huge. Um, but there's lots of other places. It, the United States isn't the only place. <laughs> Now you were talking about that. Now you're okay. You're secure that you're not going to lose your identity, and the you're more like more relaxed in a way of more. Yeah, more relaxed personally. I used to be. I, I might not seem calm to you, but I used to be very nervous. A very nervous person. Um, I think has have changed. But in a way, yeah. That the fact that maybe I'm a little more relaxed means I can. Uh, at some point, sometimes, take some more chances musically. Mm -hmm. And you see things... Uh, you know, I can do, you know, a few years back, you know, I can do a, a Latin record like this Ray Momo record I did, which I had a great time doing, but of course, in the United States, they hated it. <laughs> but I can afford to do that because I wanted to do it. Well... In Latin America, it was big. That, yeah. <laughs> that's why I was looking at you. No, no of course. Yes, I mean, you, you can I understand. In the United States, yeah. they just said, "What is this? What are you supposed to be playing rock and roll? What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> talking about uh, the movies, after the you did uh, True Stories, no? Uh, mm -hmm. We never saw you in movies anymore. No, so, I didn't do. I haven't done any more uh, 
fiction movies. I did a documentary about Candomblé in uh, Bahia, in Brazil. I did a concert film uh, from a tour after that called Between the Teeth. Hmm. It was from one of the, uh, whatever, uh, tours where I was mixing salsa and rock, this kind hmm. of thing. Uh, and then that was, that was it. Do you have any more plans to do? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I would have some ideas, but then I would end up, you end up just going to lots of meetings and talking to a lot of people and trying to tell them what you want to do. And after a while, I got tired of going to meetings. And I thought, you know, I could be home writing songs. <laughs> I could be actually doing something creative instead of just this bolt of yeah. begging for money. I could yeah. be actually doing something. Uh, so I, eventually I just said, no, I'll, I'll try again in the future, but... Yeah. And uh, I'm sure after you did, uh, after you, you won the Oscar for the Bertolucci movie, mm -hmm. The Last Emperor, uh, I'm sure you receive a lot of uh, offers to do or to score other movies too. Not so much, no, not so much. Uh, I think because a lot of movies are, are now being, the soundtrack is being uh, put together by, with songs. With many, uh, which is Which is fine too, but... That happens sometimes that people say, oh, he's so big that we cannot even go on him because, That could oh, be, no. that could be, and you could never be know. so expensive, maybe, you or I don't know. know. <laughs> so then I end up working with somebody very small who has no money because, because that's what I want to do. How does a uh, talking head fit in your perspective, you know, today? To me, it's all, there's, there's a connection because uh, I'm still doing music for dancing. Almost, except for a, a few exceptions, I'm almost doing music that's, uh, the rhythm and the dance, the fact that you can dance to it is important. Now, and with talking heads, when talk, with talking heads, that's what in some ways made us different from a lot of the other bands yeah. that were coming up. Because we were playing, uh, even though it was strange and a little bit twisted, it was still dance music. It was, it was about the, the groove and you could, the beat was really important. Um, and that, I think, has never changed. Tell me a little bit about the other side, no? This kind of thing? Yeah. Um, it started off being shows of uh, photos that I was taking. And I take photos of things, never people. I've tried taking pictures of people and they're terrible. I don't have, I don't have any feel for it. <laughs> so, uh, I'll stick to things. <laughs> um, Maybe you should keep them, and then uh, in time, and uh, in ten years, you'll say, "Wow, what a great it picture!" It could be, you know? it could be, <laughs> it could be. Uh, <laughs> um, and now the the shows are changing. It's more like an environment or an installation. Uh, there's music. It's uh, there's an uh, it's dark sometimes, and with music playing, and the, the photos have lights behind yeah. them or something like this. So it's more like an experience than uh, a gallery. Sometimes to me, it's. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a picture of the world we live in, this kind of crazy mixture. Have you heard of any band that you're interested to check out down there in South America when you go down? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it depends on who's playing, who's yeah. playing live yeah. when I'm down there. I, I might not have a chance to, oh. to... Do you go with time to spend time in the city? Yeah, a little bit. And the cities. Uh -huh. uh, I can't remember the name of the Brazilian band. They're, I mean, their record was really great, so I'm excited to hear what they sound like. Um, there's some of the bands in uh, Buenos Aires that I've heard on record, but I've never heard live. Oh. Uh, Eli Kuriak and some of the oh, others. Yeah. They, I like the records, but I've never seen them live. I think they did play in New York, but I didn't see it. I've seen, I think, almost all the other ones I've seen when they come to New York. 
Yeah, now you have the Los Amigos Invisibles. Mm -hmm. What did you like th about them? Uh, I like that, to me, it's typical that a, a band uh, like this from Caracas, they're mixing salsa, they're mixing lounge, they're mixing disco, they're mixing trip hop. They're, it, it's typical that they, their culture is made up of everything that they hear. Yeah. Their national music and international music. And they include everything. So for me, that's, that's where the future is.
Y ahora sí me queda por decirles que revisen las fechas de las giras de David Byrne, que seguro será algo inolvidable. Ya me despido de todos ustedes. Hasta la próxima hora prima. Gracias.